Not all mechanical items are created equal. The Zenith 36 carburetor is the pinnacle. No, wait, I meant not the pinnacle. This one has two major problems. Let's deal with that by tearing it apart. Now, back to those two problems. Both problems are in the lower casting that houses the throttle. Problem number one is a wear issue in the Zenith carbs. The bearing surface for the throttle shaft is only the zinc casting, and both it and the shaft wear out. It doesn't look too bad here, but that's only because last time I had this apart, I stuffed it with epoxy. And that actually worked pretty well, so no judging. The reason we don't want slop here is because air rushes in, which really messes with setting the idle. Problem number two is more tricky to deal with. Some muscle man moron has screwed down on the adjustment screw so hard that it's blown out the pinhole into the bore. They were probably unknowingly trying to compensate for problem number one. If this were the last carburetor on earth, we could probably fix that. Lucky for us, it's not. Ooh, how convenient. Another carburetor just showed up. This crusty carb is in worse condition than my one, but the small pinhole hasn't been busted out, and that's what we need. But it does have the same throttle wear issue, so we'll have to fix that. Here's the part of the casting we need, all cleaned up. There's the nice undamaged pinhole, so that's sorted. All we need to do is deal with the throttle. This time I'm going full pro. Instead of epoxy, plastic. This is a piece of plastic recommended to me by a friend who is a legit robot engineer. So, what's the game plan? Well, we're making a couple of plastic bushings. Then we're going to drill out the casting and install the bushings. In terms of order of operation, it'd probably be better to drill out the casting first, which I'll be doing on this lathe, and then make the bushings to fit. But that would have involved an extra setup and potential error. If only I had two lathes, Now for the next step, drilling out the casting. The bushings are sized to fit inside a 9.5mm hole. I couldn't get a long series 9.5mm end mill that didn't have a larger shank. This 8mm end mill has the same 8mm shank, so that's what we're going to start with. And then drill to size with a regular drill bit. A normal twist drill will follow the line of the worn out hole. 
That's why we're starting with an end mill. Okay, so here we go, fingers crossed. Well, we got through the end mill phase without anything exploding. Now let's enlarge the holes to 9.5 millimeters. Sweet, no drama so far, now let's stick the bushings in. Now, I need to drill out the bushings to something like 7mm. For the same reason as before, I'm going to start with an end mill. In this case, a chipped 6mm end mill. Ideally, we'd ream out the bore to just a smidge larger than the shaft. But I don't have piles of reamers floating around. So instead, I've got a few drills in 0.1mm increments. The drills probably won't drill at exactly their size, so we'll start safe at 6.7mm and work up until the shaft is a nice fit. There you go, the shaft fits great, and somewhat unbelievably, we got through all of that without a rage guy showing up. These zenith castings are notorious for warping, which can cause mixture problems. Not a big deal, it's just a case of lapping them flat on a piece of sandpaper. If you want to be all fancy pants, you could do this on a granite plate or a thick piece of glass. But a decent piece of MDF is good enough for me. You can clearly see the high spots here. Alright, let's put this thing back together. This is the Britpart rebuild kit. It's pretty good actually. 
The last one I bought was Beermark, and half of the parts were junk. A bunch of replacement brass jets come with the rebuild kit, but I'll only be swapping out the original ones if they're too crusty. This springy thing is the accelerator pump. When you put your foot on the gas, this is like a piston that briefly opens a valve and lets in an extra squirt of fuel. And this is the little lever that pumps the pump. This brass thing you're looking at is the needle valve. It opens and closes to control the fuel coming into the carburetor. The valve that's already in the carb is solid brass. The Brit part replacement valve has a rubber tip. The rubber will probably work fine to start with, but I'm sticking with solid brass. This is the float. Literally, it's just two bits of plastic that float. It works the same as a toilet. As the float floats, it closes the needle valve, and as it drops, the valve opens and petrol flows in. And now, one of these miserable little bastard clips. In the end, I gave up trying to do it the hard easy way, and made a little cone tool. This is the choke. It's held in by two little steel screws. Maybe they were originally brass. I don't know. Anyway, the steel is a little hard to lock in by peening, so I used a liberal amount of Loctite, which I haven't shown here, but did go back and add. Once I was happy, everything was aligned. This is the main throttle. I'm installing a new shaft into our nicely machined bushings. The little screws will be hanging upside down over our engine, so I drowned them in Loctite. And then peen over the ends of the screws. If you're careful when you remove these screws, you can get away with reusing them a few times. Next time I'll probably have to replace them.
Note the little spring here. My carburetor was missing this before. This one's off the spare. It's impossible to damage the pinhole in the bore by over tightening this screw if the spring is in place. There are three shafts going into the carburetor. The throttle, which is on the bottom, the choke at the top, and the accelerator pump off to the left. This lever I've just installed is what gets pulled on by the accelerator pedal, and that is in turn linked up to the accelerator pump. So that as you step on the gas, the engine gets an extra squirt of petrol. This bent round bar held in by split pins is the link between the throttle and the choke. You can see if I pull on the accelerator, the choke doesn't move. But if we pull on the choke, near the end of its travel, the throttle opens slightly. You can normally feel this in a manually choked car. Well there you go. I think that's all there is to say about this part of the project until we get to firing the engine. That was relatively drama free for a change. Oh well. See you next time. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire.